If you were to walk down the street right now, I want you to look at this. About one out of every six people that you pass could be living in poverty. Many of them are children. That is the brutal reality, according to the latest numbers released by the Census Bureau. Just think about it. Yet we rarely talk about the issue, right? That brings me to today's Undercovered, a new segment that we're doing devoted to news that we should be covering a whole lot more. Now, here is what the numbers tell us. There you go. Last year, the nation's poverty rate was more than 15%. That's nearly 1% higher than in 2009. That may not seem like a big increase until you actually consider this. More than 46 million people lived in poverty last year. That is the highest number in 52 years. We're talking about more and more of your family members, your friends, your co-workers just struggling to survive. Now, what's the most heartbreaking is how this has actually devastated the children. Watch this. About one in every five children under 18 live in poverty, okay? There you go. The poverty rate for them is 22%. I want to point out that's higher than the nation's overall rate. And the rate for African-American children is nearly 40%, 39.2%. And for Hispanic children, more than one-third live in poverty. And we are just scratching the surface here to talk much more about this. Tavis Smiley, the editor of the ebook Too Important to Fail, Saving America's Boys. Tavis joins us now from New York. Hi, Tavis. Uh, you and Cornell West launched this poverty tour last month, a road trip that's really a reminder to us of the growing issue of poverty here at home. What's most striking to you about these latest numbers that we just looked at? Uh, first of all, Randy, thank you for doing this segment. And you started by making a very poignant statement that these are subject matter that we ought to be talking about in this country, uh, and we're not often enough. Uh, too often, those of us in the media, political media, are content to cover the horse race in Washington, but not ever to drill down on what really matters. To answer your question, what troubles me about these numbers is that they keep growing. There's no sign that these numbers are going to go unabated uh, or, 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 or will go down in, in any significant way over the next couple of years. I just saw a report uh, in the car on the way to the studio here in New York that suggested that African-American unemployment, which obviously links to poverty, uh, isn't going to drop until the year 2013, maybe 2014. That's a long time to go with numbers increasing every month, every quarter. And so the striking part to answer your question is that these numbers keep growing, and when are they going to be uh, abated? Yeah. And what would you say is happening to the middle class? When you look at these numbers, I mean, I've heard some people describe it as, as society is almost taking the shape of an hourglass. Mm. What's, what's happening is that the new poor are the former middle class. I get so, quite frankly, uh, sick and tired of politicians talking all the time about and to the middle class, as if somehow the middle class is the same now as it was 10 or 12 years ago. It's, let's be clear about this. The new poor, as I said a moment ago, are the former middle class. Those numbers you just laid out make the case very clearly. More and more Americans of every race and color and creed and ethnicity are falling into, into the ranks of the poor every single day. So at some point, politicians have got to stop being afraid to say the word poor to talk about poverty in, in this country. We can discuss everything else in Washington, but never get serious about a conversation about how we eradicate poverty in this country. Well, here's the bottom line. If the middle class, who politicians are, uh, think that their polls suggest are the folk they should be talking to, the folk they should be referencing, if the middle class continues to fall more and more into the ranks of the poor, at some point, we got to move beyond trying to placate or talk about the middle class and really talk about what's happening in America, and that is mm -hmm. poverty. And, Tavis, when you talk about the, uh, the president's job plan, we know that it tackles uh, extending unemployment benefits. Mm -hmm. And if you look at what the Census Bureau says, unemployment insurance helped keep 3.2 million people out of poverty in 2010. So how significant, how important is this? I think his jobs bill is important. I think it should have, it, he should have gotten around this a bit earlier, obviously. Uh, and I don't think any American disagrees with that. They, they were late getting to this issue. Having said that, I'm glad he finally addressed the issue. The question now is, is he going to compromise? Will he capitulate? Will he cave when the Republicans start pushing back on this plan, as they surely will? They don't like anything the president uh, uh, proposes. So the question is, will he have the courage, conviction, and commitment to stand by the speech, to stand by the proposals that he's laid out? But it's important. Now, having said that, I don't think personally, with all due respect to the president and the, and the plan, that it's big enough. I don't think the plan, the scale of the, of the plan, fits the size of the problem. Uh, and that's the real issue for me. We've got to get serious about this, and I'm glad that we're starting somewhere, even though it's a little bit late, 
Uh, but I wish the plan personally were bigger, particularly when you consider that the, 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 the deficit reduction plan passed this summer, uh, that that plan didn't uh, have any new taxes on the rich or the lucky, didn't close a single corporate loophole, didn't raise a, a single, didn't extend unemployment benefits in any way, which this new plan thankfully does call for. But the question is, will the president and those who support this plan stick by it, or will they get pushed against the wall again? By